What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, host of the Philly Talk podcast, and today we got a special guest, former cornerback out of the University of South Carolina, Israel Mukwamu. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How you doing? Hey, hanging in there, hanging in there. So we're going to be talking a lot of football, and on your end, I know that's all you could think about, getting ready for the NFL 2021 draft. But before we get into football, something for the people to get to know you off the field. What is your favorite movie, song, and athlete of all time? Uh, favorite movie of all time, uh, probably uh, Remember the Titans. You know, that's a football movie right there. Uh, favorite song right now, um, I'd probably say Everybody by a Little Baby. And then favorite rapper of all time? Athlete. Oh, athlete of all time. Got to go with uh, LeBron James. All right, all right. Going outside the sport, but hey, global icon, global icon. And you can never go wrong with the GOAT. I'm going to come out there and call him the GOAT early, especially for the young generation. I'm going to go out there and say that. Might get a little drawback, but it's okay. It's okay. So now that we got that good, fun stuff out the way, let's get into what you prepared your whole life for. And that's the NFL draft. So tell me, why should a team draft you? And if they do, what type of player are they getting? Uh, number one, um, why a team should draft me is because I'm 6'4". Um, there's no other DB like me in the draft. Um, I got the, the ability to move like a 6'2 corner. Um, my press man is very well. Um, I got the ability to play zone and just cover up space that other DBs can't. And then I'm versatile. I can play a corner. I can play a nickel. I can play safety. I can do it all. And just the guy that they get in as a team is just a hard worker a guy that's going to come in, not do um, too much talking, just going to work hard and just develop and be the best in the game. Hey, head down, get to work. They, they, they do well in the NFL. They definitely do. So with uh, them great attributes, you explain, what do you believe you do best at the corner position and something that you would like to improve on? Um, like I said, again, uh, you can't teach a uh, size, so I'm 6'4", uh, 205. Um, I can press man, get hands on at the line of scrimmage. Um, I can cover zone very well, so take it, take space up and uh, get my hands on the ball. I got very good ball skills. And then, like I said, again, I'm, I'm versatile. I mean, that's what the NFL look for, guys that can that can play different positions that, that have IQ, and that's, and that's what I got. And so give me something that you think you can improve on in your game overall. Um, I think I got a pretty good game, so there's always room to improve on um, everything. I can be a little faster. I can be a little stronger. I can get in the film room more, so I definitely can improve in all aspects of the game. So you, you said you're 6'4". What, what are you coming in at weight? I, I read on your uh, bio, like 205? Yes, sir, 205. Hey, that's that's good. That's a nice, solid uh, thing. And so you did play some safety in South Carolina as well, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. One thing that stands out to me when watching your tape, other than the three picks against Georgia, is in 2020, when you know played a little bit injured, which we'll talk about, I like the one-handed snag against Kyle Trask in Florida. That was a good one. That's just, you know, vision, knowing where you are, awareness, and just making a play on the ball because we see a lot of guys in the NFL are in the spots. But, hey, cornerbacks are not wide receivers, and they let it be known with the drops. The drops in the NFL are becoming a little bit overboard. I mean, they got to catch it. You got to catch it. But, uh, hey, I ain't a DB, so I can't really talk when I talk. I play basketball a little bit of uh, athleticism I had, but uh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. So um, a lot of good corners coming out in this 2020 draft. You got the Patrick Sertains, the Caleb Farleys. You even got your teammate, J.C. Horn. How do you compare with them and to them? Um, I'm definitely, I definitely feel like I'm up there with them. I feel like um, a lot of people uh, in scouts or whatnot then forgot about me because I got hurt this year. But, I mean, just, just look at the numbers. Uh, I mean, my numbers is uh, better than a lot of them, if not all of them. Um, so I feel like I, I'm matched up very well with them. Those are all great players, but I feel like I'm right there too. But I feel like my injury kind of made people for, forget about me. But, I mean, if you look at the stats, numbers don't lie. So I'm up there definitely. Hey, 
I agree. One second. Let's look at the stats. You played 22 overall games. You had 86 total tackles, four tackles for lost, a forced fumble, 10 pass deflections, and seven total interceptions. And what's cool about them 10 total pass deflections is I believe nine of them came in 2019 when you were at your at your peak because before that you weren't getting as much playing time being a younger player in the University of South Carolina. And in 2020, you know, we're going to talk about the groin injury and just making a business decision to say, hey, I did what I can do while playing with it. I'm going to get ready for this NFL draft where I can really show my true potential. So I like that. I really do like that a lot. Good stuff. Good stuff. So now that we talked about it, we got the Patrick Sertains and all that matter because we talking about the Izzy Mukwamu's. That's what we talk about. Number 24 for South Carolina. Um, during your time at South Carolina, what was one play that you remember the most? Over all the plays you made, there's one that stucks in your head that it will go with you forever. I mean, of course, you got to be uh, the pick six, uh, which was a, uh a game changing play. Um, I believe it was in the um, second quarter, uh, about three minutes left um, going into halftime. The game was tied 10-10. Uh, I remember we called cover three. Um, the receiver came off the line. He had a comeback route and then I just broke as hard as I could, got the ball and then I took it to the house. That was, that was one to remember because I feel like that just turned everything for me. Do you think your game fits cover three probably the best is that's one of the fa your favorite coverages to play or uh, I think my game fits uh any coverage uh I'm, I'm very versatile so I think I can play man cover two cover four cover three anything I like that I like that so if you had to compare your game to a corner in the NFL who would it be and also whose tape do you look at like who do you try to imitate because you think that's just the best way to go um as far as a comparison um it's a lot of it's a lot of different guys I try to model my game after. Um, I look at Jalen Ramsey a lot. Uh, definitely look at uh, one of South Carolina greats, uh, Stephon Gilmore. Um, I look at Richard Sherman as well. So it's a lot of different guys that I try to model my game after, but I can't necessarily say uh, I play exactly like one person. Hey, that's good because at the end of the day, you're – Izzy Mukwamu and certain people eventually are going to want to imitate their game after you. That's what we're going to be talking about six years later. And I like that. I like that. Um, Got to give props to the people who are doing it, but it's the young up and coming. It's a, it's a new era, new league. You know what I mean? Um, With that being said, we talked about who you think you compare yourself to and look like on the defensive side of the NFL. When you make it to the NFL, not if, when you make it to the NFL, um, who do you, want to match up give me two wide receivers that you want to stand in front of stand in front of and play against um first one i'll say is julio jones uh just because he's been at the prime of his game for so long um he's he's big he's fast he can run every route in the route tree and he's just um dominant and then um another guy i'll probably say uh Devontae adams he's he's pretty uh smooth off the line i mean routes crispy so i uh, i'll definitely like to take my talents versus his hey and that's why a six for a corner would be pretty good because i mean some of these defenses are forced to put a, a six one a five eleven guy on julio jones like come on mismatch in the red zone and one thing i noticed about your game you're you're not opposed to going inside and playing against tight ends i know uh, we didn't talk about that but give me your take on just going in and playing against tight ends in the box. How do you feel your game is when it comes to that sort? Um, I, I think my game matches up well because, you know, tight ends, they're, they're bigger bodies um, and they're kind of sneaky fast. So you gotta, you just gotta know how to leverage yourself against tight ends. And I feel like I match up very well. Yeah, definitely. The game has changed. Before, tight ends were blockers. They would catch a couple five-yard passes, but now you got the Kittles, the Kelseys, and, you know, Zach Ertz, which might be a sad story because he not, might not be in Philly no more. But, hey, the tight end game evolved, so that's why you need, like you said, a guy who's versatile. It can't just be the fastest guy. You got to get physical now, especially with, with the rule changes, which makes it a lot harder to play defense in the NFL, you know, hitting above the, you know, all that good stuff. But uh, let's get to that injury that kind of sidelined you in 2020. So it was a groin injury. Am I correct? Yes, sir. So you it happened to you in game one, I believe, I read. Yes, sir. 
and you end up playing, I, I believe, to week five or game five. So you played a couple games through that injury. Was this the toughest injury you ever had to play through? Uh, only injury I played through uh, throughout my whole college career. Um, but I'm 100% now, so uh, there's nothing I can't do. I've been working out. Um, I'm doing pretty much everything, so I feel good. Hey, that's, that's what's up. Um, now, again, we talked about this a little bit backstage, but uh, this is predominantly a Eagles podcast, and uh, we definitely can use a corner. I mean, we got a guy out there that we can trust in big play slay, and we got some talent, but they're all what I would call slot corners. They're small. They were thrusted out there to play on the outside, and we got beat up a little bit, a lot of it, to be honest. <laughs> Guys like Devontae Adams and DK Metcalf really torched us. We didn't have to play against Julio Jones, thank God, but – we definitely can use a cornerback. So what do you think about the Eagles defense in general and possibly playing against a, a besides a player like Big Play Slay? Um, the Eagles defense is a is a very, very uh, talented defense. Um, I mean, they got pretty much everything. They got a good D-line and Fletcher Cox. Uh, the linebackers are pretty solid and DBs are pretty solid. Um, and then just playing against a guy like um, – playing with a guy like Slay, I mean, that will be – That'll be huge for me because you're going in uh, as a rookie and then you're learning from one of the best in the game and just being able to chew his brain out and, and, and pick his brain uh, every day. And that'll be a, that'll be a blessing. Yeah, I do got to say this, though. I know you wear number 24 and that is Darius Slay's number two. Um, let, me, let me ask you, you're going to go in there and say, hey, let's 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 do something for it. Or are you going to let the let the veteran keep the number? Oh, no, nah, you got to let the veteran keep the number. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's how it goes, yeah, because one day, once he's gone, someone's going to come for your number, and you're going to say, hey, Junior, you got to wait. You got to put right. your time in. You got to put your time in. But, uh, man, like I said, big play Slay is a guy who's a press corner. And, again, he you can really look at him. He's a pro bowl corner, played most of his career with Detroit. But, again, um, very versatile guy. Let me ask you this. Um, if you did play with a guy who actually follows, would that bother you, you think, or would you be able to switch, mix, match, or – or would you like to stay on one side and play? Um, I actually like following because during the duration of the week, you get the you get the feel of a receiver. Because let's say you play a um a team that has multiple receivers that are good, it's kind of hard getting the feel of them when you lining up and it's a different guy in front of you every time. So I like when people follow, and I like I like following too because then you catch the tendencies of the receivers when he like when he does certain routes and certain releases. So I definitely. I'm a fan of uh, following. Hey, yeah, man. And once you get to that stage where a D, where a DB coach or a defensive coordinator asks you to follow, you know you did it. You know a Pro Bowl is most likely coming after that. Like you said, the Jalen Ramseys. Richard Sherman is one who possibly could have followed. It just wasn't in his system in Seattle. And when he went to San Fran, the same thing. I believe he could follow. Uh, but uh, definitely did his work over there. And I do agree. You should Mario game after the bigger corners. And we need to see the group of bigger corners coming in because the NFL is getting bigger and faster at the wide receiver position, like DK Metcalf. I mean, the speed and size of that guy is wild. And I can't believe the Eagles passed on him. Um, it hurts. It hurts. So last question I got for you, my guy. Um, okay. It's draft day and your name gets called. What is that going to mean for you? I mean, just just a relief. I mean, because this just been something that I've been working all my life for. Um, my brother put me into football since I was seven years old. And I remember um, I remember just saying, I'm going to make it to the NFL. And then uh, my brother always kept telling me, like, it's a 1%. It's like it's like less than 1% that make it to the NFL. And as a kid, everybody everybody's, is playing football. They think we all going to make it. But it's true. So just the dedication I kept uh, keeping God first, God blessing me with with this opportunity. I mean, putting uh, great people in my life and just getting me this far. I mean, it'll definitely be a blessing. Hey, that's great news. Now, I do want to ask you this. I see you're wearing the shirt says whatever it takes. And you, you got a merch line. Uh, speak to me about the merch line. So, yeah, the merch line, uh, the Mukwamu brand, that's what it's called. And then our line is whatever it takes. So basically how the story came about was um, I was getting recruited in high school, uh, played high school football in the state of South Carolina, had a couple offers my junior year. Then um, my family, we relocated to Louisiana because my dad got a job out there. 
And I just remember my recruiting process coming to a halt. Nobody was recruiting me like that. Um, so I remember um, trying to get coaches' attention. So I would go on Twitter, at coaches, telling them to follow me back, look at my highlights and things of that nature. And some coaches, they followed, some coaches didn't. But I remember um, when I wanted to coach attention so bad, I would put my notifications on for Twitter for whenever they got on Twitter. And I, I remember just liking their Twitter until they followed me back, liking every tweet, retweeting all their tweets until I blew up their phone and they followed, they finally followed me back. And then um, DMing them my highlights and telling them who I am. So I, that's how it came about because I do, because I did whatever it took to um, for them to get my, um, to get their attention for me. So that's how it came about. Hey, like I said, hearing that, what else do you need to hear from a guy who's going to take whatever it takes to get to where he is and show the world that he's a talented person. And uh, that right there is kind of the mentality any and every draft po prospect should have going into the NFL draft. Mukwamu, it was great talking to you. Number 24 for the Gamecocks, uh, a baller, definitely a ball hawk. Like I said, people don't understand how you be snatching uh, stuff out, out of the air. So I wish you played more 2020. It was just a weird season not just the injury wise with, you know, COVID-19 and everything. So listen, then I believe in the talent and uh, I hope you, I hope you do what you got to do and get there. You're definitely going to get a vote from me and I'm going to do whatever I can to get this out for you. My guy, appreciate you for coming through. I appreciate you for having me. Thank All you. No problem. No problem. With that being said, we're going to end this shout out to everybody who came through. Appreciate you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video and definitely Audience, do your part. Get this out. You know Twitter. You know IG. It all works. Let's go. Until next time, you guys know what time it is. We out. Peace.